About three months have passed since NASA's Orion spacecraft splashed down in the Pacific Ocean after a flight beyond the moon and back. At the time, the space agency said the Artemis I mission had successfully met its goals and paved the way for humans to follow suit. But recently, the agency said there is a heat shield issue. It looked wonky after Artemis I's moon mission. There's more information on the damage to the ground systems and launch tower. Meanwhile, the White House's 2024 budget would hand NASA $8.1 billion for the Artemis program for moon exploration in fiscal year 2024, which starts on October 1st of this year and runs through September 30th, 2024. That's a $500 million increase over the enacted 2023 Artemis funding. We'll discuss everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Orion set several records during the Artemis I mission to the moon. In addition to surviving 5,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures during atmospheric reentry, the spacecraft's initiative heat shield made this possible. But NASA's follow up analysis of the protective layer has revealed levels of wear and tear that weren't predicted by the models. Howard Hu, manager of the Orion program, told reporters yesterday at a NASA briefing to discuss the latest Artemis I findings. Orion exceeded all performance expectations. Over 160 flight test objectives were achieved, of which 21 were added over the course of the mission as managers got better performance than expected, he said. The uncrewed Orion capsule splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on December 11, 2022, that followed a 26-day trip to the moon and back. However, during inspection and analysis, investigators noticed some unanticipated variations across Orion's heat shield. Some of the charred material ablated away differently than what our computer models and what our ground testing predicted, who said. More of this charred material was liberated during re-entry than we had expected. A dedicated investigation had been launched onto the matter while NASA is working hard to learn more about it. There's overall a, quote, lot of work to be done in this investigation going forward, he explained, adding that it is a big task to correlate the associated data. It's not immediately clear how much more charred material came off than anticipated. That's the analysis we must do, who said. Investigators will need to individually examine each heat shield block, of which there are more than 180. Orion is intended to carry astronauts, but the unexpected performance isn't a safety issue, according to WHO. He said a significant amount of margin was left over, and he doesn't believe they've reached any limits in terms of a margin perspective. The protective heat shield did its job and then some, but because this behavior was not predicted by models, it's something NASA must now investigate. NASA wants to make sure it has the best possible heat shield to protect human passengers during upcoming missions, who explained. On its return from the moon, Orion slammed into the Earth's atmosphere at speeds at 24,600 miles per hour. This produced temperatures in excess of 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which the heat shield proved capable of handling. The heat shield uses tiles made from an ablative material called Avocote to protect the capsule and crew during atmospheric reentry. An ablator burns off in a controlled fashion during reentry, transferring heat away from the spacecraft, NASA explained in a December 8th press release. The new Avcoat tiles measure anywhere from one to three inches thick, covering the heat shield's outer surface. Engineers expected some charring of the ablative material, but little pieces coming off rather than ablating, such as burning off in a controlled manner, it was a surprise, and they want to understand it better. Besides, there's a problem with the exploration ground systems. Although the launcher sustained more damage than initially expected from the 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust generated at liftoff by the rocket, work's already underway to repair damaged components in tandem with planned upgrades in preparation for Artemis II, the first flight with astronauts that will send the crew. Mobile launcher damage included corrosion to pneumatic or airfield or cryogenic fueling lines, detached welds on tubing, approximately 60 broken panels and cabinets with instrumentation, and destruction to several elevators and blast shields, which are currently being repaired. Modifications to the mobile launcher to support future Artemis missions are underway and on track, including incorporating elements to support an emergency egress system at the launch pad. 
Despite the issues, NASA officials say the space agency is moving ahead with the planned Artemis II mission, which will involve a crew of astronauts. Repairs are underway at the launch pad. The new space launch system SLS rocket is being built, and the next Orion capsule is set for test, as most of it has already been assembled. Like Artemis 1, the Artemis 2 mission will see an Orion capsule journey around the moon and back, with the big difference being the inclusion of an actual crew. Speaking to reporters during the Tuesday briefing, Jim Free, Associate Administrator for NASA's Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, said preparations for Artemis 2 continue to move forward, and that now is the time for our vigilance to continue so that we understand the risk we're taking. Encouragingly, there's nothing in the Artemis 1 post-flight analysis that's giving NASA any reason to change the launch date for Artemis 2, which is slated for late November 2024, that according to Free. Artemis 3, a crewed mission to the lunar surface, is planned for late 2025, but Free cautioned that key milestones will have to be met to make that happen, namely the certification of the SpaceX Starship Mega Rocket both as a launch vehicle and a lunar lander in addition to the space agency receiving the requisite moon suits from Axiom Space. Hopefully all of this won't just be on paper as it was built with taxpayer money. Biden's proposing $27.2 billion for NASA to boost moon and Mars programs. The budget fully funds the rockets, crew vehicle, lunar landers, space suits, and other systems needed to fly astronauts around the moon on the Artemis II mission and then land astronauts, including the first woman, first person of color, and first astronauts from another nation on subsequent Artemis missions on the lunar surface as America begins development of a lunar outpost and aims toward the eventual exploration of Mars, White House officials wrote in the 182-page budget request. The funding boost could be seen as a vote of confidence in Artemis, which notched a huge success last year. The proposed budget also allocates $949 million to NASA's Mars Sample Return Project. That's a collaboration with the European Space Agency that aims to get pristine pieces of the Red Planet back to Earth as early as 2033. Those samples are being collected by NASA's Perseverance rover, which touched down on the floor of Mars Jezero Crater in February of 2021. Perseverance carries 38 titanium sample tubes and has already filled 18 of them. Other highlights of the budget request are $2.5 billion for NASA's Earth Science Program and $180 million toward the development of a new space tug that can help deorbit the ISS, among other off-Earth tasks. The ISS is expected to retire at the end of 2030 and must be brought down safely in a controlled fashion shortly thereafter. The new space tug would be an alternative to Russian systems that may not be able to accomplish the task, the budget document states. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.